Good morning and welcome again. It is so good to have you with us today as we come together to worship together. It's hymn number 237 if you need a hymnal. Stand if you would, let's sing together. I stand amazed in the presence. Brother Mark, good morning. It's good to see you this morning. We're glad that you are here and that you have chosen to come and worship this morning at Forest Home Baptist Church. If you're here as a guest, you will be able to find a guest card somewhere in front of you on the back pew uh, there in front of you. and You'll find a place as you exit after a while to drop it in that offering place so we can have a record of your visit. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that each and every member is here as well in these difficult days in which we live as we try to social distance and, and all the, the guidelines that uh, we are asked to try to keep up with. And so thank you for being here today. Scripture that I'd like to start our worship service this morning would be Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are always there for us to protect us from harm, from those things that are around us, that evil that surrounds us. Thank you that you walk with us through the valleys. You walk with us on the mountaintops. You never leave our side. And in those valleys of, of disappointment and discouragement and hurt and pain, thank you for being there and taking our hand and walking with us. We thank you for your great love for us. We pray for this service today that all that we say and do would honor and glorify the name of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, a um, few things I want to make a mention of this morning. First off, this Wednesday, our student ministry is going to do stuff a little bit different. Um, since spring break, we have done all our Wednesday nights online. Um, this Wednesday, from 6.30 to 8 o'clock, we're going to meet outside um, the church in the, in the park area, and that's where we'll be this Wednesday. Um, snow cones will be here, um, watermelons will be here, and if you don't like those, 
you can bring a bottle of water, which we'll have also. Um, so you, you'll be taken care of in that, in that aspect. Um, so this Wednesday, outside, the student ministry will meet. Um, this morning, though, is a very special day because today's a day where we're going to get to recognize our graduating seniors. Um, and just to make sure that I see all of y'all, um, I'm going to ask our seniors that are graduating to just come forward to this front row, um, each one of y'all. Um, so, and the reason why I'm making you do this early is so I don't miss one of y'all. So that's you, Grace. Come on. Y'all come on down right up to the front. Um, so this has been a very weird senior year. Um, I can't say there's been a graduating class that's had to deal with what y'all have had to deal with. Um, finishing up a school year online, finishing up a school year without your peers, being completely limited on who you can have at your graduation. I'm going to tell you this, we have hurt for y'all. We have hurt for y'all. And I want to read a little scripture to you. It's James chapter 1, verse 12, and it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he... Um, has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. In life, in life, you will face hardships. Each one of y'all will face hardships, and you face some hardships this school year. And if you can make it through on the other side of these struggles, let me tell you this, God's right there waiting for you. But here's the encouragement. Not only is God waiting for you, but God is going through each step with you. He never leaves you. He never departs you. He goes through these hard times with you. And I, I want to challenge you with that. I want to challenge you to remember that as you um, graduate from high school and step on to the next thing in your life. Um, we have um, some other seniors that are not here also, but at Church Body, I want, I want to brag on this group to you. This is a very smart group. Um, it, it really is. We, we have um, honor graduates. We have graduates that have received a lot of scholarships. This is a group that you should be proud of. You, you really should. And I, 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 I thank you for your prayers for them, but I do want to go ahead and um, have call y'all up here and give each one of y'all a gift this morning. Um, and first off, I want to call up Lauren Grace Holland. And next, uh, I have Dayton McElyay. And last but not least, we have Caden Thrower. So what I want to do real quick before we send them off, I want to pray over them. And church body, if y'all can join me praying over them as well, um, let, let's pray. Dear Lord, I just come to you right now. Lord, I just thank you for this group of students and the hard work that they've put in. But Lord, not only the hard work that they've put in, but their love for you that has um, been very evident. Lord, I, I thank you um, for letting us see that, letting us do this journey with them. And Lord, we ask you that just whatever is next for each one of these students, Lord, we ask you to guide and direct them and let them stay humble and stay obedient to your word. Lord, we just, we pray um, your blessings all over them. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Matt spoke to you a little bit about these students. Grace graduated early, uh, has been taking some college classes. Dayton, I know, is the salutatorian of the Kilgore High School graduating class uh, this year. And uh, we had an opportunity earlier in, in the month to kind of do a, a part, partly a kind of a virtual graduation. I'll have the opportunity to MC graduation again this year, but I, she put out just a wonderful salutatory address 
uh, and, and blessed my heart. So, Dayton, thank you for that. It was very good. Let's continue to sing together. Hymn number 573, one of my favorite hymns. It says, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day when heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Has questioned 
the reason I was living for. The pleasures of this world were leaving me, wanting more, something more. Then you gave me life's new meaning, not caring where my life had been. You reached out to me with your mercy, and I will never, never look back again. What a great song. Amen. Thank you for being here again. Thank you, choir, Brother Mark, for wonderful music. Sunday in and Sunday out. What a thank you, Ryan, for that lead part in that uh, in that presentation as well. Take your Bibles, if you would, please, and let's go to Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I'd like for you to find Ephesians chapter one in your Bible, if you would, please. 
things I want to share with you out of several verses in that first chapter as Paul write, was writing to the Christians there at Ephesus. And before we begin, I'd like for us to pray together, please. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to open your word and for you to speak to us. There may be someone in this room or viewing this by internet or television or Facebook that might need this message today. And I pray that you might bind Satan from this place, that we would be able to focus on you. There's a lot of things going on the outside world and a lot of things that are disturbing and upsetting. But may we set those out of our mind for a few moments and just focus on what you want to say to us in this passage. It is from you. And we thank you for the privilege that we have to open your word. And if the Holy Spirit was would speak to one heart today about salvation, about being changed by the glory of God. Pray for your will to be done in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. If I were to ask you today, if you have your checkbook in your pocket or in your purse or a billfold, if you were to open that checkbook or that billfold or that purse, you could probably tell me exactly, maybe not exactly, but how much money you have. If you keep good books, you should be able to do that. How much money you have in a financial bank account. I want to share with you today three things that you have in a spiritual account. Three things that, that have been given to you through salvation. And for those that have not been saved yet, but have looked at that issue and thought about it, I want you also to be able to see three things that God gives to you the moment that you are saved. The moment that you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and you begin to experience what this choir just sang about being changed. And in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning there in verse 7, let me share some things with you quickly in the time that we have. The Bible tells us there in verse 7, In Him we have redemption. That's number one. That's the first thing that's in your spiritual account with God. You have redemption. Notice it says, In Him and that means that because of Him, by knowing Him, by accepting Him as our personal Savior and Lord, we have redemption. It is in Him, through Him, by Him, because of Him, that we have redemption. That word redemption means uh, literally to release something. It means a ransom. There was a ransom for your soul, a ransom for my soul. But redemption came. Three things about redemption quickly. Redemption demanded a price. For you to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and be saved and be born again, it demanded a price. Something had to be paid. I want you to go with me to a couple of scriptures, uh, if you would, please. First one I want you to find will be 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. Paul the Apostle writing here, not only in Ephesians, but also writing to the church at Corinth in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20, says this, For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Your salvation to you and to me is free. All we but do but to pray to God and ask Him to save us, to forgive us, and we can be saved. But our redemption cost the Heavenly Father His Son on a cross. A price had to be paid. Redemption demanded a price. 
If you enter a store and you want something, you redeem it. You trade money for that item, for whatever it is that you want to purchase and take home with you, and then you own. Somebody else owns it. But you look at the price, and you're willing to pay the price. And so you give that price for that item, and ownership changes. You become the owner of that item. You have redeemed it. And redemption, our redemption, demanded a price. 1 Corinthians 6.20, you're bought with a price. So glorify God. If you're a born-again Christian, your Christianity was bought with a price. The highest price anyone could ever pay. Your Christianity was bought with a price. A couple other places I want you to look at with me, please. Over in the Old Testament, if you'd find the book of Leviticus, over close to the front, I want you to find Leviticus, and the first place we're going to look at in the book of Leviticus will be Leviticus chapter 17. Take a few moments and find Leviticus. I want you to see two scriptures in the book of Leviticus that goes along with this concept of redemption and that our redemption, to be make it personal, your redemption, my redemption, demanded a price. If I wanted to be saved, and I am, but back when I was was lost, if I had wanted to be saved, my salvation was going to cost a price. It's not money. It's not works. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 says, We're saved by grace through faith. It is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. Here's the price of Leviticus chapter 17. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar... Translate that into New Testament terms. Our altar was the cross of Calvary. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. Now here it is. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It was not just a little important that that Roman soldier took that spear and thrust it in the side of Jesus as he hung on the cross. It was vital because the blood flowed and the price was paid. Atonement is found in the blood. Yes, I agree this is Old Testament sacrifices, but do not throw that Old Testament away. Because it is... It was important to God then, it's important to God now, and it will always be important to God. Now listen, we're bought with a price. It was the blood, and it was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was the price that had to be paid for your sin and for my sin. Now, we looked at Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. A few pages back, Leviticus chapter 1, the first chapter in this book of Leviticus. It's known as the book of law. Now look in verse, verse 3, chapter 1. He's talking about offerings. If his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd, now look, here's the, here's the stipulations for the sacrifice. Let him offer a male. There's the first stipulation. Second stipulation was without blemish. Now there's another, a third stipulation. He shall offer it on his own free will. Now here we get a picture of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Here was, here was the male, Jesus Christ. Here was Jesus Christ without blemish. Herod said, I find no fault in this man. 
What do you want me to do with him? He was a male. He was out without blemish. And Jesus Christ's life was not taken from him. He freely gave it up for you and me. So he fits in that Leviticus chapter 1, verse 3, about the sacrifice and about the price that had to be paid for our sin, for salvation. This is the riches of Christianity. In your checkbook, in your spiritual checkbook, your spiritual account, account you have redemption. Our redemption demanded a price. Number two, our redemption declared a pardon. Isaiah 55 verse 7 says that God pardons. In the New Testament, part of the Pharisees' problems with Jesus was he went about forgiving sins, and they said, who can forgive sins but God? And Isaiah 55, 7 declares God is one that gives pardon when we seek God and when we go to God. And we ask God to forgive us our sin. He gives us a pardon. We hear from time to time about presidential pardons. Someone was on, a, was on death row. And the family and the lawyer requested that the president extend a pardon, a presidential pardon to save his life. Listen, friends, you and I were standing on death row because our redemption declares a pardon. And we received a pardon. While we were on death row, we received not a presidential pardon, but the King of kings and the Lord of lords gave us the pardon. Our redemption demanded a price. Our redemption declared a pardon. Number three, our redemption dismissed our punishment. Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The wages of sin. What was our sin costing us? It was costing us death. Say, Brother Riley, I sinned and I didn't die. I understand that. And that is true. That's not the death that he's talking about in Romans 6.23. See, the Bible teaches in the book of Revelation that there are two deaths. First death is this physical death that, that more than likely most of us in this room will experience unless Jesus Christ comes again and raptures us while we're standing here alive. We're going to face that death. We're going to face that grave. It's part of living. It's part of life. And we're going to experience that one day in our life. But the gift of God, the wages of sin is death. And our redemption dismissed that punishment. That second death that the book of Revelation talks about. It's the second death when a lost person, a person without Jesus Christ, that's never accepted Christ as their personal Savior, will stand one day in front of the great white throne judgment of God, and the book will be opened, the book of life, and the books of works will be opened, and they will be judged according to their works. And when God Almighty puts them in hell forever, that is the second death. And the Bible says, woe unto that person that experiences the second death. No one wants that. You don't want that. So redemption, we have redemption. The riches of Christianity. Oh, we have redemption that's been given to us. Number two, back to Ephesians chapter 1, moving on down to verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. An inheritance. That's the second deposit into our spiritual account as a Christian. The first deposit was redemption. The second deposit is an inheritance. 
We look in verse 11, in, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Now, another scripture I want to use to kind of tie that up for us a little bit neater is in Romans. So take your Bibles and let's go back a few pages to Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to ask you to find Romans chapter 8. And we'll look uh, at just verses 14 through 17. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at, at verses 14, beginning there in verse 14, and we're going to go through verse 17. Romans chapter 8. For as many as are led, this is verse 14, led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now here it is. Here's our inheritance. And if children, and that means if children of God, then we're heirs, heirs of God. We understand what an inheritance is in this world from our family, from our elders, from our fathers and our mothers and our grandparents perhaps, we understand what that inheritance means. But here in this spiritual deposit into our spiritual account, not only do we have redemption, but we have inheritance. We're heirs of God. And he goes on, joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Inheritance. I like that word there in Romans chapter 8. Those verses that we read a moment ago, that word, Abba, Father, we cry, we cry, Abba, Father. That word, Abba, is actually an Aramaic word that is an informal term for the word Father. We might think of that word, an informal usage of our word Father in the English language is the word Daddy. Daddy, Father. Abba, Father. We can call God Daddy in a, very, in a very reverent way. He is our Father, but we are heirs of Him because we are His children. He is our Father, and in an informal way, but a reverent way, He is our Daddy. I have two children. Sometimes they have introduced me to their friends and they've introduced me as their father. And I understand that respect and that, that name, but I want to tell you, I really like it when one of my kids call me daddy. It just sounds different. It just means something different. God wants us to look as, at him as one of his children in a very close and personal way. Way, joint heirs with Christ. The third deposit that we have there in Ephesians chapter 1 that we've been looking at back in verse 13 and verse 14 is the word guarantee. Let's look at verse 13. In Him, there's the third in Him in these verses that we've been looking at. In Him, you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also... Having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now look at verse 14. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance? The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. I want to listen to these words in, in the King James Version. I was reading from the New King James Version. I want you to listen to these words words in the King James Version in chapter 1 of Ephesians, verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. New King James Version takes that word earnest and, and turns it to a guarantee. Earnest. 
Earnest is a down payment. If you buy a house or if you buy land, most likely you've been asked to give an earnest payment. And that is a promise that there is more to come. You're making a promise to that loan holder, that lien holder, that here is my earnest money, here is my promise, and there is more to come. And then they set up that, that written guarantee, that written contract, and you make those payments for however many months, and that is the more to come. But to get that started, you, you had to, to give them that earnest money, that down payment. Look at verse 14. Listen to these words from the King James Version. Which is the earnest of our, in, our inheritance. Now look. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. Now what does that mean? I thought I was already purchased. I thought I was already saved. He's saying until the redemption of the purchased possession. You are the purchased possession of God. This guarantee, this contract, so to speak, that God made with you about your eternal life and your soul for eternity, that contract was written on Calvary on the cross. And the signature on that contract, on that guarantee, was signed in blood by Jesus Christ. And then Jesus Christ gave you, living within you, living within me, the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, that is a seal of the promise that there's more to come. I'm glad this is not the end. I'm glad that salvation doesn't end sitting in a pew. I'm glad salvation doesn't end. There's more to come, and the Holy Spirit was just a down payment. The Holy Spirit was a seal. You are saved. You are born again. You are on your way to heaven. You've probably heard this. This is not original with me, but I want to share it with you as we close. Those are dangerous words of a preacher. I'm closing. <laughs> I'm going to try to close. Listen. You have been saved from the penalty of sin. You haven't heard this. You've heard this before. You have been saved from the penalty of sin, Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. You will not face the penalty of sin if you know Jesus Christ. And it's not that first death that we need to be worried about. That's coming. It's that second death. It is that death pronounced upon those that reject Jesus Christ. Good people. Good people. Reject Jesus Christ every day. And every day good people pass away without knowing Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You have been saved from the penalty of sin that's been released upon you. Number two, you are being saved from the power of sin. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There is no temptation taken you that you cannot overcome. All you have to do is look for the way out. There's a way to escape, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says. There's a way to escape every temptation. You have been, you are being saved every day from the power of sin. You don't have to do it. I don't have to sin, you don't have to sin, and we can't say the devil made me do it. It's a choice we make. And in a few moments when we say amen, you're going to head for those red lights because that's exit, that's the way out. In every temptation you and I face, there is a way out. We just have to look for it. And when we look for it, we don't need to stroll to it, we don't need to walk to it, we need to run to it. To get out of that temptation. You have been saved from the penalty of sin. You are being saved from the power of sin. And here is that verse in 14. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. You will be saved 
from the presence of sin one day in verse 14 until the redemption of the purchased possession when you step into glory you will be saved from the presence of sin it'll never be around us again to God be the glory amen that we can get to that point in our life now the question is do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? Not do you know about Him. Not do you put up Christmas lights at Christmas. Not that you come to church at Easter. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? It's not about a religion. It's not about a denomination. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you've never accepted Him as your personal Savior, you can do that today. You can pray and invite Jesus Christ to come into your heart or be my Savior. I'm sorry that I've sinned and I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me for my sin. Cleanse me from that sin and help me to live my life the way you want me to. and Help me to let you live your life through me. You might do that today. You may want to do that today during this invitation time where we are in our sanctuary and where others may be watching this in the different ways that Brother Mark's making it available for a lot of people. You may want to do that. If you're not in this room and you want to do that and you do that, please contact our church and let us know that you've made that kind of decision. It's important to tell somebody about your decision. You may want to come during this invitation and pray at these altars about something. Something that might be on your mind. Listen, I want you to know that if you're here today and you're saved and you're born again, never let the devil wreck your salvation in trying to tell you that you may not be saved. That you may have lost your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. The world didn't give it to you, and the world can't take it away from you. Jesus Christ gave it to you. And in order for you to lose your salvation, somebody stronger would have to come up to Jesus and take you out of his hand, and there is no other stronger than Jesus Christ. Sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we doubt those things when someone very close to us passes away or a spouse passes away or a family member passes away. We can have those doubts. Listen, Satan is, is quick to do that. Don't let him rob you from the joy of your salvation, of knowing that you were saved years ago and you're still saved by the glory of God. Maybe you'd come for salvation today. Maybe for church membership. Maybe for rededication. Maybe just for prayer. However, the Lord uh, may lead you. As Mark leads us in the invitation, I'm going to be down here at the front if you want to come and pray at these altars. If you want to come and speak with me about a decision or about a prayer, I'll be here for you. We're going to ask you to stand as the choir stands. As Brother Mark leads us in this time of invitation, I'll pray and then he'll begin. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the great privilege that we have to know that we can be saved and to even know that we have been saved and be secure in that salvation. Father, I thank you for your death on the cross and all that that brought to us. Oh, my soul. We can be born again. We can be saved. We can be redeemed. We have inheritance and we have a guarantee that there's more to come. We thank you for that today. Father, be with those who might want to make a decision today. Give them the courage to do that and the boldness to do that. In Jesus' name, amen.
people said, Amen. 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 Delaney, you come and stand, please, right here. And uh, you come and stand with her. Yeah. Delaney Gribble comes today upon promise of letter from the Kilgore Missionary Baptist Church here in Kilgore. If you would encourage her on that decision, say amen. amen. Yes, amen. And we want you to come by in a few moments, extend to her uh, encouragement, words of encouragement. Uh, it's difficult standing in front of everybody, and uh, you come and just encourage her uh, on her decision. Um, just quickly, let me share with you that I've uh, been in contact uh, earlier this morning with Andrew and Rachel. And the update on Andrew and Rachel is that um, Rachel, of course, is back in the hospital with extremely high blood pressure. But as of this morning, it's coming down. And uh, that's good news. They were concerned about kidney failure, and that's not happening at this moment. And uh, yesterday, baby Ella had the best day that she's had. And that's answered prayer as well. Andrew wanted me to tell you, Thank you so much. He has felt the love and the prayers of this church during this uh, ordeal. And uh, so you continue to pray for them and uh, continue to just lift them up. Uh, and I know that you will do that, and I know that they will appreciate that uh, very much. Seth, I'm going to ask you to come, please, and we're going to have time of dismissal. I'm going to ask Seth to pray specifically for Andrew and Rachel and baby Ella. And um, Jason Jones, would you come and pray after Seth, please? And I'm going to ask Jason just to pray for our church and situation that we're seeing uh, all around us and just to continue to pray for our church. I'm going to be at this door this morning. Mark's, I think, is going to be back at that door. Pat and Matt may be, that sounds like a 1950s doo-wop group, doesn't it? <laughs> Pat and Matt will be somewhere else, but we want to just tell you good morning. We love you. We appreciate you being here. Personally, I want to thank the church for last Sunday afternoon for the vote of confidence. Uh, believe me, I never walk up these steps. What I don't think of what Brother Buddy told me one day when he called me and I was filling in for him. He said, now you've got tomorrow night, right? And I said, I got it. He said, don't mess anything up. I think about that a lot. Every time I walk up that step, I think about Brother Buddy. I said, don't you mess anything up. And so you come by and just encourage uh, this young lady that's made this decision, okay? All right. God bless you. We'll see you whenever we can, as soon as we can, and we're going to get Seth to pray. Jason, you close us, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us uh, another day here on this earth. God, we know that you never promised us an easy walk. God, we just thank you that you've promised us that we know what's going to come after death. God, we thank you for giving us the knowledge that we can call upon you and that you will answer the prayers if it be your will. God, we pray for this family. There's so many uncertainties that the next few weeks will bring. But God, we thank you for giving us hope and peace of mind that whatever happens is your will and that you will get us through today and tomorrow and the rest of our lives. God, we just thank you. We love you. I pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Father, we do uh, pray for our uh, church and Still going through this uh, time of transition, uh, uncharted territories for a lot of us here. Uh, there's been some that have been through this, Lord, and we just um, pray for your guidance. Uh, we just thank you so much for the blessing of having Brother Pippin um, in our congregation and on our staff and an interim basis, Lord. We just thank you for um, that gift, and we just thank you for his. Um, willingness to serve, to serve in that capacity, and we just um, pray for him daily, Lord, and we just, we continue to pray for our our country every day, and to pray for that somehow, some way, we can turn our eyes back to you and, and keep you in clear focus and 
the ultimate um, uh, savior that you are. And um, we just pray that we can come together and, and worship you in unison and recognize you as the almighty God. And uh, Lord, we love you and forgive us when we fail you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.